Good afternoon, Greater Love Christian Church family. Good afternoon to our Facebook family. Continue clapping and let's just give the Lord a great big or a big clap of praise. For he has made this day. He woke us up on this morning. So let's just give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death angel did visit our home last night. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to ask our youth, le youth leader if she'll come up and open us up in prayer. Father God, we thank you for another day, God, which was not promised, Lord God. We just thank you that you are so graceful and gracious enough to give us life and give us a roof over our head and just continue to provide for us, Lord God. So on today, Lord, we just ask that you would fill this place with your spirit, Lord God, that you would continue to bless us with your traveling yes, mercy, Jesus. Father God, that you would continue to anoint our head with the oil and the blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you on today. We ask that you would cover us now, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins, yes, the ones we committed knowingly and unknowingly, Lord God. Yes, we just thank you, Father God, for how great you are and how good you have been to us, Lord God. You are magnificent, you are wonderful, and you deserve all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father God. So I ask, Lord God, that you would fill this place with your spirit, Lord God. Touch each and every one of us, Father God. Touch our hearts that we would be more like you, Father God, and that we would do the things that you have called us to do, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would touch the preacher of this hour, Father God, that you would touch her mind and her heart, Father God, that the words that come out her mouth would be from you, Father God, and that we would be able to hide it in our hearts on today, Father God. So we just thank you on today. We bless your holy name because you are worthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to come on up and Help me out with a little bit of devotion. Amen? We don't count the numbers. We make the numbers count. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has. He has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has, he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
God says, Hallelujah. We may not have an instrument in the house, Hallelujah, but in the old days, Hallelujah, they got together, Hallelujah, and they clapped their hands, Hallelujah, and they stomped their feet, Hallelujah, and it was melodious in the ears of God, Hallelujah, because they praised Him, O oh God, Hallelujah, they worshiped Him. Sister Brianna, for that beautiful welcome to our Facebook family. We all here are family, so it's just good to be with family. It's good to see my sister Daima safely back from vacation. God is good. God is good. Um, I'm going to go into the announcements quickly before, <clears throat> excuse me, before we do testimony. Uh, we have at the end of this month coming Elder Denise River Wood for our Super Sunday. <laughs> I'm fired for God. I'm excited about that. She is a personal close friend of mine. She can preach and teach, and she will. So I look forward to that. Um, just so excited, trying to begin to line my 
preachers up for next year, and I spoke with my uncle, and I'm so excited that um, he, he may be coming to render a word on one of our Super Sundays, and I'm just so excited. God is just doing a new thing in the earth, and you know, my uncle said something that was so important to me. He said, people don't get together in fellowship no more like they used to, and I said, you know, I thank God when he said it to me, because I love to fellowship. Y'all know I'll throw a program in a minute just to have some fellowship with somebody, so I just thank God that I continue to um, listen to his voice and, 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 and do these programs where we can have fellowship with one another because it's not all about just celebrating a specific time of year or whatever. It's about coming together as a body of believers. It doesn't matter if, if, if I'm in this church and you're in that church and you're in that church. As long as we believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, we can come together and praise God. Amen? Amen. So I truly thank God for that and for I do have a few um, conferences I'm going to be lining up also for 2023 if the Lord say the same so um, we'll get together with that as a congregation we'll start beginning to plan that and then we have our anniversary coming up on January 21st is Saturday we'll be at the Decoven house on Washington Street for that event um, we have Reverend Josh uh, Cotton coming from Shiloh Baptist to preach and y'all know he can preach and y'all know he will preach so I'm looking forward to that and then that Sunday we have uh, Pastor Link for, from Rising Star Ministry who's going to come render us um, um, or, um, a word on Sunday from the Lord, and then we'll have coalition down here afterwards. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I believe that's it. Um, we are going to try to plan something around the holidays um, as a family, congregation family, whether it's at my house or wherever, it doesn't matter. We can get together, do a grab bag, and just have a meal and fellowship with one another. Um, all the kids are welcome. We'll get the baby something too. And then also, I want us to as a congregation, maybe adopt one family. If one of y'all know a family who's really in need, um, who just doesn't have any means whatsoever, you know, put our, we can pull our monies together and just get them, you know, one present a piece um, or two presents a piece, whatever your budget can afford, you know, and then just go and give in that way. Um, I know uh, my youth leader, uh, Sister Alze, has been wondering about feeding the homeless. So we really need to get on board with that. The weather becomes, becomes colder. Um, they will be needing those meals. And so if we could do that at least once a month, that would be great. I'm going to put Sister Alize over charge of that so everyone can, um, she can <laughs> pick out a day that's going to work for everybody, probably a Saturday, I'm, I'm assuming, um, probably a Saturday or a Sunday right after church, um, something like that. But anyway, but I think they're fed on Sunday, so I think Sunday we don't have to worry about that. Because I believe there's a church that goes into the soup kitchen at five or four or five and feeds them. But anyways, we'll we'll she'll she'll get that together and then she'll start um, a list of who can cook what and when we can come together and we'll start doing it that way. Amen. 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 So let's just give God another great big hand of praise. He brought us for, uh, from another week. Amen. Another week. So many people did not make it this week. And um, we are still here in the land of the living. And if we're still here in the land of the living, it's because we still have purpose. Say it. I have purpose. I have purpose. That God has for me. That God has for me. That I intend to fulfill. That I intend to fulfill. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Amen. Amen. Since I was able to modeling something, what were you saying? Did I forget something? No. Oh, okay, yeah, so Sundays won't work, but she was in agree agreement with me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, open the floor up for testimony service. If there's anybody who has a testimony, I got a testimony. Y'all know me. Hallelujah. Is there one? Is there one on this afternoon? Okay, I have a small testimony. Um, giving honor to God again. As y'all know, my voice has been gone for like a week and a half. So while I was up there singing, something just kind of like came over me and my voice got a little stronger. Mm. So I, I want to thank God for that because it was nothing but him. <laughs> I know it was nothing but him because I really sound horrible right now. Amen. Amen. God will give you strength when you need it. Hallelujah. Is there another testimony on this afternoon? Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. Give honor to you and Bless all of you. Um, I just want to thank God, like you said, for getting me through this week. I just had so much homework and everything like that. And I told God when I started school that I would put him in front of everything else and that I would trust him to get me through school and push me because the past two years I haven't. And because I'm leaning on him and I know that he's going to do it, he just gets me through every time. This week I thought I was just 
Gonna stop doing half of my classes, but he got me through, and all of them are done. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is such a good God. You know that um, <clears throat> that shooting that happened with the two officers, the three officers this week, was right behind where us as Alde lives, and so. She called me. She was saddened by that. And it really, really it bothered me. I was saddened as well to know that, you know, this world really is just on its way to hell in a handbasket because nobody just nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares about anything. So um, and just think, you know, being that close, it could have been her. I mean, or it could have been our backyard. It could have been us. And, you know, and, that, and that's why one of the reasons why I love to praise. I don't just praise God when I show up here for church. I praise him. My kids can tell you I praise God all the time. I try to be in his presence as much as I can because that's what's going to last in these last and evil days. That's what's going to stand is what's in you. And I always tell y'all what's in you is what's going to come out of you. So as the days get darker and wickeder, if that was us faced with that, then we know that we have the word of God to stand on. We know where our destination lies. We know if our life does get taken, we will end up in eternity with God. So um, just wanted to put that out there. Um, <clears throat> just just continue to keep this country, this world in prayer. Just just continue whenever in your, you're in your, your prayer time to continue to lift each other up, lift our babies up. They're growing up at a time where the world is calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. You know, so we gotta we gotta stand for that. They're teaching stuff in schools that I would never approve of. If if, if that was in my kids' day, my kids would have been pulled out and homeschooled, or they would have not taken that course whatsoever. And the teacher would not have forced me to make my child take that course. So we just really gotta keep our nation, our country, our leaders lifted up in prayer. You know, um, so that the, God's will continues to go forth in the earth. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have to go ahead with our offering. Looks like church is going to go a little bit quick today. <laughs> well, I can't control the word. I have a long Holy Spirit want to speak, but uh, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering. Um, <clears throat> I know most of us give online, so I'm not worried about that, but um, we're going to have six to LA. Look, I ain't got to have it. She's got bass and came on up. Hallelujah. <laughs> We, we can come on up any old way, you know, no shape, form, or fashion. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed. Most gracious and everlasting Father God, we thank you for this offering, God. We thank you for being here on today, oh God. We thank you for our life, our health, for our strength, oh God. We know that something could have happened, oh God, from last Sunday to this Sunday, and we wouldn't even be here. But God, we just thank you so much in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you would bless each and every individual that gave. For those who had a heart to give but could not, oh God. God, we thank you. We ask that you would use us for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, good, gonna ask you all to come to the altar so we can cast all of our cares and all of our fears and all of our worries upon Jesus. He said, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Sometimes we don't we don't remember when we're going through that. God truly does want to take our burdens. He truly does want to carry that load for us. And we get so caught up in the here and the now and, and we begin to take it on ourselves and we forget that Jesus is right there because he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the earth. And we forget that he's right there and that he's willing to take it. So we take it and it begins to crush us and crush us and crush us because we're not giving it to God. We're not sharing the load. We're not saying, Lord, help me. So I just want to gather at this altar on this afternoon. And just imagine Jesus is standing right beside you, right beside you. And he's asking you right now, my child, how can I help you? What can I do for you? He's right there. He wants to know what each and every one of you are going through. What is it that is too hard for you to handle? What area are you struggling in? Jesus truly wants to know. He said, I'm here to help you get through it. I went to Calvary's cross so that you would not have to go through these things alone. I'm here with you. I'm always with you. And I'm willing to share the load. God, we thank you on this afternoon, God. We come into this house to give you reverence, to give you glory, honor, and praise, oh God. Because you are so worthy, God. There is no God like you.
The song, it says, there is no God like our God. And God, for that, we thank you, God. God, as I look over my life and I realize all the times you were there and all the times you cared and all the times you rescued me, oh God, even when I was unaware, God, I just say thank you, God. God, I, I look at the clouds in the sky and I look at the trees as they begin to turn colors. God, I look at the waters as they are calm and soothing. Then I look at the waters when they're raging, God, and I say thank you, God, because there's no God like you, God. God, when I see the rainbow appear in the sky and it reminds me of the promise, oh God, that you made to Noah that you would never flood the earth like that again, God. I just say thank you, God. These things, oh God, help us to know that you are a true and a living God. You're not a dead God, but you're very much alive, still fulfilling your promises from over 2,000 years ago. Whew. What a God we serve. So God, we come in here this afternoon to lift you up, oh God. We come to give you praise, oh God. We come to acknowledge that you are God and God alone. So for that, we just say thank you, God. God, we know that you are with us because you told us in your word that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, God. For that, we say thank you, God. So, God, as we travel through this journey called life, oh, God, and as the roads begin to twist and turn, God, and as we begin to struggle in this thing or that thing, God, we just ask, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Help us to give you our load, God. You said you're willing to carry it, God, but sometimes we like to hold on to it, God. But whatever it is we're going through, help us, oh God, to be able to surrender it to you, God. Leaving it all at your feet because you said, cast your cares at my feet. Give them to me. I care about you. And God, if any of us has been around long enough, we know that you don't talk idly, God. And we know that when you say it, you mean it, God. And so, God, we know that you love us more than anybody could ever love us on this earth. Oh, God, for that we just say thank you, God. God, we lift up the babies, oh God, not just in this house, but everywhere, God. We lift them up, oh God. And God, we're praying for this nation, God. This lost and dying generation that seems to be turning every which way but towards you, God. God, I pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit as you said in your word in the last days and times. Help us to be more pleasing to you, God. 
Help us to serve you, O oh God, which with the purpose that you have called us to, God. Help us to be effective, O oh God, in ministry, O oh God. Not just in the building, in the church house where we gather together, but everywhere we go, God. In our homes, on our jobs, oh God, in the grocery store. Wherever you see fit to use us, God. Use us until you use us up. God, will be so careful to give your name the praise. We continue to lift up the rulers and the leaders of this world, God. I know that you have a perfect plan and that your plan shall Come to fruition, God. Even now as we speak, God. It is you who are in control of all things. For that, we say thank you, God. God, we praise you. We magnify you. Continue, oh God. Continue, oh God. To wrap your loving arms around us, oh God. When we're all alone in the midnight hour and we don't understand this or that, why this happened, why that happened, why does this take place, why do I feel like this? God, continue to wrap your love and arms around us. And as the old folks used to say, help us to understand it by and by, which is simply the more we continue to grow in you, help us to see it clearer and clearer. So God, we just thank you. We praise you. We magnify you now. Be with our members who are not here today for whatever reason, God. We love you, Lord, and we're so glad that you loved us first. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I just love God. When I think of all the things I've done that went against God when I was out there in the world, when I think of all the things I've done, all the ways I've thought wrong, I can't help but develop a heart of love for a God who has the whole world in his hands, but yet could love somebody like me. That's why I love him, y'all. Because he first loved me. He didn't just first love us by giving us his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, who never committed a sin, but died in our place. He didn't just love us by doing that, but he persistently loves us. He loves us on purpose. Even when we mess up, I don't know about y'all, I don't know the life you live and where you come from, but where I came from since the day, I made a lot of mistakes, and I ain't even going to call them all of mistakes, some of them were conscientious decisions, but he loves me so much, he didn't stop. He never once stopped, he never walked away, he never threatened to walk away. Why? He said... I know the plans I have for you. God is so 100% sure about the plans that he has for us. He doesn't even attempt to give up. He said, I knew you before you, you were even in your mother's womb. Before the very foundation of the world was formed. I knew you. Can you imagine? He knew all the times I was out there messing up. He knew I would be here one day. And somebody told me this over 27 years ago. I looked at them and laughed and thought they was crazy. Even though I grew up in the church, I looked at them and laughed and thought they, thought they was crazy. So you got the wrong one. But God knew. And he kept loving me and loving me the same way he continues to love you and love you and love you. And he does not give up. God is so good. And he's so strategic in his love. That you can live your whole life your whole life as a hellion and get on your deathbed and invite him into your heart to be Lord and Master and your Savior and he will come in. Tell me that's not love. You could We, we, we could do each other wrong. El, Sister Elsa could do me wrong her whole life. Treat me bad, cuss me out every time she me do me wrong. And I can't imagine at the end of her life when she say I'm sorry, I probably look at her like she's crazy. Like, do you remember what you put, used to shame me, embarrass me, hurt me? Because that's the way humans think. Most humans. Because when you say you shouldn't think like that. But that was just an example. But God doesn't do that. Just he still comes in. 
He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He knocks ever so gently on our heart. Ever so gently. The only sin that we cannot be forgiven for is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. God forgives us for everything we do. Tell me that's not love. You know, I could say something to Sister Diana and not even mean it that way. And she could be going through something in her own self and take it another way and walk out of here and never come back again. And then I would be wondering, what happened? What did I do? Because we get so easily offended when we don't really know what's behind it. Or you, you ever text somebody and then they text you back with all caps like they're yelling at you and you're saying, whoa, where did it come from? And you know they misconstrued your text because we know when all caps mean that somebody's angry and they're yelling. And you'd be like, where did it come from? I, I, I didn't even mean it that way. But that's how easily we get offended. Instead of calling and saying, hey, what's going on? Why are you sitting there text? You know? Because if you're my girl, and I don't know you 20 years or 15 years or 10 years or 5 years even, or even a year, I should know you enough to say, well, okay, she can't possibly mean it that way. Let me, let me see what's going on. And instead of coming back in a text the wrong way, let me call, hey, what's going on? Why are you sitting there text? You know? And find out the issue. But we are so easily offended. God never is. And you can imagine everything we do that is considered sin is against God and God alone because only God is holy. Think about every sin you've ever committed. Even the ones on this week because you did. Because you live in this which is flesh which is very imperfect and it will never make it into heaven. But he forgives over and over and over and over and he loves over and over and over and over. What a mighty God we serve. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm going to attempt to sing a little bit of this song before I go into the word. That's right. Them babies was praising God with the with the tambourines. Hallelujah. Y'all praise him one more time. Get your hand clap for the tambourines. Come on. Come on here. Hand clap for that tambourine. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Help and all the reasons help me. I always choke up in tears. 
on this song. So we're going to go right into the word. We're going to continue with our series out of Jude. We'll be looking at Jude. It's in the New Testament. If you have your smart devices, your physical Bibles, what have you. Jude, it's only one, one chapter. Jude, verse number 12 through verse number 16. For those of you who are physically able, if you'll please stand in reverence of the word, of the reading of God's word. That's Jude, the 12th verse, through the 16th verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you need a minute, say I need a minute. I'm going to read it from the Tony Evans Study Bible, which me may read a little bit different from yours. These people are dangerous reefs at your love feast, as they eat with you without reverence. They are shepherds who only look after themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by winds, trees in late autumn, fruitless, twice dead and uprooted. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shameful deeds, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. It was about these that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied. Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all of the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against him. These people are discontented grumblers living according to their desires. Their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantage. Let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting Father, God, as we go into your word, we pray for clear revelation. Speak to our heart, O oh God, as only you can. God, I pray that you would speak in and through and to me, God. For all that I am, everything that I have, any wisdom that I speak comes directly from you. Hide me now behind Calvary's cross that they might not see me, but that they would only hear you, God. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And continue with an infiltration in the church of um, spies among us. As, as I, you know, I read this, this chapter it, it, it's just so disturbing because when you when you think about all the apostasy that's going on in churches today, and um, it, it, it's just really disturbing. You know that we are truly in the last days and times of people come in and, and they, they play church, they pretend church, they act church, they dress church, they talk church, but in their hearts it's really wicked. And and, and I was, as I was reading and studying this, I was just, you know, my, my, my soul was vexed because I said, God, people really don't understand what they're doing with this thing. And so, you know, I, I began to study and I, 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 I said, Ooh, you know, um, in whatever capacity that you want to use me, God, even when it corrects me, just use me. It just it just makes you want to be humble before God and just lay down your life before God and say, "Here I am, just like I am, your Lord. Just just use me because we are in a really wicked, wicked, wicked time. I mean, a really wicked time. The the the, the, the two the three cops, the three officers that were 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 shot, two of them were killed in Bristol. They purposely set that up, purposely so the cops would come so they could kill them. And, and that just lets you know the times that we're living in. We, we got human trafficking that goes on everywhere. And even at the Walmart in Middletown, they sit and they scope out young women that they can snatch and take. And this world is just so wicked. And, and this, you, you, you begin to question, is there anywhere that's really safe? They begin to teach in the schools homosexuality. It's okay. They, they begin to teach about having two daddies and two mommies. And, and, and I mean, you just look at the world. It's so far from biblical times and biblical days when God walked amongst the earth when he when he walked in the garden with Adam and, and, and when he went to go visit Abraham and Sarah in the form of an angel. We are so far from those times because the world is now it, it, they're doing their own thing where they, they begin to call right wrong and wrong right and they, they even will go to the Bible since they want to point out a scripture and say God didn't mean this but he meant that and so now they want to make the Bible fit their sin and so what we have now is a a lot of apostasy going on in the church. 
You got leaders who get up in the church and they're only going to preach those feel good messages. They're going to preach how you can become prosperous and, and how you can become successful and how you can become a better you and, and how God is always working on your behalf and how it's okay to do this and it, it's okay to do that because once you're saved, you're covered under the blood. It's called apostasy because when you preach these messages, then now you've got a congregation because the, the leader believes that I can just live on any type of way that I want because I am covered under the grace the law of grace so I can live whatever way I want because I gave God my heart but that's not true sister Alizé how am I going to represent darkness if I have teamed up with light the Bible says these people are dangerous reefs at love feasts as they eat with you without reverence they are shepherds who only look after themselves. They don't care nothing about you. They come up in here, they grab the mic, they put on a show, and that's all they're doing. Because when they leave here, they live in any old kind of way. They living like they don't even know Jesus. They doing all sorts of things, talking any old kind of way. You would, I tell you, if I could be in the bedrooms of some folk that go to this church, I could only imagine the things I would hear, the things I would see. It's called apostasy. But more than that, he's really, really speaking. He's speaking to the church, but he's speaking to the leaders. See, because the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. So it would behoove me to come up in this church to preach God's word, to, 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 to quote unquote convince you of God's word being right, and yet I'm still out there doing wrong. Because guess what? He said when that happens, there's a place of darkness that's reserved for you. But we get so comfortable. We become so comfortable in this society and, and, and in this world that is literally calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. If I say the right thing, it, to people take it now to where you can, I can offend you and you can sue me for saying the right thing. That's where we at in this world. But if I am the salt of the earth, I got flavor. So if you eating that dog piece of pork chop or dog piece of chicken ain't got no salt on it and I show up and shake a little bit, you should have a little bit of flavor. I shouldn't come and join in you, join in with you in, in that dog piece of chicken. But that's what's going on in the pulpit. You got leaders getting up in here preaching. And, and, and the, the sad part is they don't think anybody is seeing them. But remember how David was out in the field shepherding his father's sheep? And he had an audience of one who saw his heart, who thought, this is the next king. This is my next king. That audience was God. God is always watching. He always sees. And so when we're out there, and, and, and when we're not in church anymore, and we're out there, what is it that we do? How do we live? Do, are, you, are you still living a pleasing life unto God? Are you doing something that if Jesus was standing right now, to put it this way, do you find yourself doing things that if Jesus was standing right there, would you still do them? Because if the answer is no, that means you shouldn't be doing them. But yet you got people who get up in the pulpit, preach the word of God, boy, they think, oh, they think just rambunctious and flamboyant and they just so good with the tongue and, and, and just got all these people just fooled and thousands and thousands and they live in any old kind of life. So I get up in the pulpit and I preach a good word and, and I minister to Sister Daima and I'm preaching a good word because she's trying to find Jesus. And then I take and I call her on the next week and say, girl, let's go to the club. And I get in there, we drop it like it's hot. Or I take and call and say, hey, girl, can I use your car? I want to go see my boo, and I want my husband to know I'm using your car. Or I take and I go to the grocery store, and I throw a few things in my pocket, and then pay for a couple things. But you got people living all kinds of ways. 
Oh, I take and, and I, I, I'm a secret person. I, I go home and I'm just drinking and drinking and drinking. Or getting high, getting high, getting high. But yet, I get up in the pulpit and I preach heaven now. So I'm preaching one thing, one way, and I'm living an entire different way. But it's the way I'm living that's what's going to affect the people. Because I can talk all I want to. It's not what you hear me say all by itself, but it's what you see me do. So when you begin to see me misleading you, wait a minute, hold up. Pastor Carmi want to go to the club and she listens to that music, all the cuss words in it and stuff like that. What kind of pastor is she? Is what I'm going to think. Even if I agree to go to the club with you. That's going to be the first thing that's going to cross my mind. Because I know if it were me, and Sister Brianna was up here preaching her heaven down, her preaching her heart out. The word of God says this in the word of God. And she, the minute she called me, said she's going to go to the club. Even if I'm a club goer, I'm probably going to tell her, yeah. But guess what? I'm going to get on that telephone. I'm calling Sister, Sister Kayla. Guess who just called me? Want to go to the club? <laughs> and so now, the way I view her is going to be different. I'm going to have a respect for her still because I've come to love her as a person. But when I see her up in that pulpit, it's going to be different. I'm going to look at her like, I know darn well she ain't up there preaching that and she living that way. And so what you do when you do that is you're fooling the people. And you're making them think it's okay because guess what? Now, Sister Diamond going to say, well, pastor do it and she the pastor, then it must be okay. So I can continue living this way and doing these things and God's still going to just accept me the way I am. But the Bible says there is a place reserved for them called darkness. But that's what we got going on in the church today. We got infiltration going on in the church. People coming in, dressed up, dressed down, however they want to dress. Speaking in tongue, saying all the all the quote unquote right church terms, shouting, dancing. If you ain't know no better, you would think them and Jesus was ace cool boom. And then the minute they leave here, they go back to their old selfish ways. But what I found out is. The Bible says they become like a dangerous reef to a boat. And they, they become like the, the trees in the autumn. You know, trees in the autumn begin to lose their leaves, so they're just empty trees. So in other words, you're just making a whole lot of noise and saying nothing. It's basically what you're doing. You're, you're, you're in a dangerous spot. Because you're, you're, you're only thinking about yourself. You, you know, one time I, I was, was at this church service. And and, and and this guy didn't have too much to say. Wasn't praising God through the whole worship service. Nothing. Just kind of sitting, you know, just sitting there in the arms crossed. But the minute he took the mic, he became a show monkey. And God said, that's what I'm talking about right there. He said, I call them show monkeys. The minute there's a crowd of people, the minute they get the mic, the minute all eyes are on me, they put on a show. And then they leave here and they go right back to living their hellish ways. You cannot represent God and the world at the same time. You have to choose one. Because the Bible says there is a place for them. The blackness of darkness is reserved for ever. My mother always said, birds of a feather flock together. So you have those who come in here and they got their little team. Because most times they do their own recruiting. They, they say, hey, you know, come to my church, come to my church, come to my church. So they, they, they meet you you know, they may meet you at the laundromat. They may meet you at the grocery store. They may meet you through, you know, their boo and, you know, boo introduce you to, you know, his girl, whatever, meet at the club, wherever you meet them. But you begin to minister, come to my church, come to my church. And they finally come and, and you up in the pulpit preaching. 
but yet you live in a double standard life. They don't know too much about Jesus because they didn't grow up in a home with Jesus. So you're their only example how they how they're learning. And you live in a double standard life. Not only are you sending yourself to a place of darkness, but you're sending them to a place of darkness. And people don't realize, Sister Alizé, when you begin to live this type of life, see, people think that music doesn't matter, and, and, and music really does matter. God got me working on a word called Music Matters. It really does matter. Because when you begin to listen to a, a certain music, it opened up the portals of darkness for darkness to come in. So while you think that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going through on my job and, and I'm going through in my home and I'm going through with my child and that nothing seems to really be lining up and my life seems to be a bunch of chaos and everything seems just to be falling apart. Not even realize you gave the devil access by opening up the portal by the things that you do and that you say that go against the word of God while you're claiming to be one of God's representatives. This thing is really deep. So when you see stuff happening and now you want to call the next person to pray for you, not even realizing, or maybe you do realize that you're the one who opened up that portal and let that enemy come in. And you better know when the enemy comes in, he is not just coming after you. He's coming after everything that's attached to you. All he is looking for is an opening. Because he, he operates illegally if he doesn't have a vessel to operate through. So when you let him in, guess what? He takes off running. He's trying to kill you and everything else attached to you. And, 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 and he's so cunning. He starts out by making y'all think he friends. We friends. Oh, it's all right. It's all right if I go ahead and drop it like it's hot. It's all right if I go ahead and get in this relationship where I'm fornicating. Oh, it's all right if I tell a lie every now and again. Oh, it's all right if I do this. And you begin to convince yourself this because he's convincing you that it's okay. Because remember, enemy ain't really coming to make you sin. You got to sin nature. You're going to do that anyway. But he wants you to doubt the word of God. Remember what he said to Eve the garden? Did God not say that you can't touch that tree? You can't eat that fruit. Did he not say that? Is that what God really said? Knowing what God said, she went ahead and was fooled by the devil and ate it anyways. And that's exactly what's going on in the church. And you've got some, some preachers and some pastors who become so high up, so world-renowned, that they literally begin to put their own twist on the Bible. And now you got these mega preachers, and I'm not saying all mega preachers, but you got some mega preachers who's putting their twist on the Bible, got tens of thousands of people following them, and there's a place reserved for them in the darkness. But not just them. Those tens of thousands is following them, doing what they're doing. You could tell a child to do something or you could show them not to do something. They're going to do what they see you do, not what you say nine times out of ten. Kids are like sponges. They absorb everything around them. They absorb it. And when you think kids ain't listening, they're listening. When you think they don't understand what you're doing or what you're saying, they understand. So then when the enemy begins attacking your child and you don't wonder why your what you want begin to wonder why your child is acting like this and doing these things and, 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 and being this way, it's because you let the enemy in your home by opening up that portal, by working for him, living for him, and claiming that you belong to Jesus. Getting up in the church, misrepresenting God. It's a very real thing. And it's going on more and more and more today. God is not pleased with the things that are going on. He says, I'm coming back to judge the church first. He says, they, they are fruitless, twice dead and uprooted. They're fruitless. You want to know how you try the spirit by the spirit, see if they be of God? By the fruit that you bear. 
So if you're not bearing no fruit, what good is a fig tree if it ain't giving me no figs? It's no good, right? So if you ain't, if you talking all this stuff, but you ain't bearing no fruit, what good are you? You're just a dead tree. Like autumn leaves, in the autumn, but when the leaves begin to fall off the tree, you're just a dead tree. Everything you get up there proclaiming and saying is just falling by the wayside. It ain't even falling on good ground because you ain't living it yourself. And it sounds like a tree that's uprooted, Daima. An uprooted tree. What good is an uprooted tree? If it ain't got its roots in the ground and it's grown, it's no good. I wouldn't want no uprooted tree near my house. Because as soon as the wind blows, guess what? It's going to come down. It's going to fall. And that's exactly how these people are. They're not enduring sound doctrine. Or maybe they're preaching sound doctrine, but they're definitely not living it. But there's a place in the darkness, the blackness of darkness. Let me, let me get it right. There's a place in the blackness of darkness reserved forever. Now Enoch prophesied these things. Said he saw the Lord with 10,000 of his holy ones who's coming to execute judgment and to convict all the ungodly. If God came back right now with his angels to judge, where would you stand? It's a question that we got to ask ourselves. Are you going to dot every I and cross every T? No. But there are some things, as my mother would say, when you know better, you do better. Some of us have been around long enough, especially those in leadership, to where we know what we're doing. So when we step up in here, when we accept that call, that's a serious thing. When God began to call me to preach, I had a hard time with it, Sister Diamond. Hard time with that. That's just one thing I did. I would do anything in the church. I just did not want to preach. I did not want to preach because I understood there was a lot that came with that. A lot of responsibility that I just didn't believe I was ready for. Come to find out I probably wasn't because in the beginning of my ministry, I made quite a few mistakes that I regret now. Thank God for his grace and mercy that forgave me. But had I have continued living that way, Sister Alize, I can only imagine this scripture would be applying to me right now. And I would be one of the ungodly that he would be coming back to judge, even though I was in the church preaching. We have the power, especially leaders. There's, there's something about leaders in a church that we come to respect. You know, you, you ever see a, 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 a minister in his collar or suit and he goes out and he's out and about. Everybody gives him a respect. There's a certain respect that comes with that responsibility. Or you go to a church with the people and everybody reverences the pastor. Outside, you know, they reverence God, but they reverence the pastor as well. Because there's a certain, there's a certain uh, uh, um, honor that goes with being a pastor or being a minister or being a leader in a church. So people reverence, they respect you. <laughs> but then you get up here and you abuse it. Because your intentions are not up on Jesus. They're on you. It becomes a show. It becomes a one man show, literally. You're up here. Yep, you may know the word of God because you may study it. Anybody can know the word. The devil knows the word of God. He probably understands the word of God better than we do because he lived with God for a while. But anybody can study the word, Amen. And you get up here and you can preach heaven now. You, you, you probably can go online and learn how to hoop and, and holler. You can. You probably can. I, I wouldn't doubt it because you can just bug Google anything these days. And you could get that down pat, study it for a month or two or three or four or however long. Maybe it take you a day. I don't know what your learning capacity is. 
And they get up here and they're, whoo, that evil preach heaven. Y'all hear her today. Man, that girl is bad. That girl can preach. But you're living like a hellion. You're preaching on Sunday and in the club on Friday. You're preaching on Sunday in that man's bed on Tuesday. You're preaching on Sunday calling your old boo on Wednesday. You're living a double life. A life that's not pleasing to God. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his or her ways. We cannot continue to live like the world and call ourselves representing God. You know, I it, it, it vexes my soul when I hear certain types of music. I can't listen to music that got all that that cussing and degrading women and sex and all that stuff and it it really does just does something to my spirit. It makes my spirit uneasy. It, it makes me I, ugh, I can't why would a person want to listen to something like that? It's something I'll never understand. I'm not a Christian. I, I'm not going to say a person because there are worldly people who enjoy that music. They live and die. And do you know music has an impact on our spirit and our soul the same way food nourishes the body? That's how powerful music is. Remember when Saul had those spirits and he was vexed? It was David who went and played the music with the harp or the lyre he played. And, and it calmed Saul. As long as he was playing... Saul was calm. The minute he was stopped playing, he was vexed again. That's how powerful music is. So music really does matter. It matters what you listen to when you represent Jesus Christ. It matters what you do and what you say when you represent Jesus Christ. But we get it in our minds. I'm saved. I got a position in the church. So I'm all right because I'm under grace. That that's living that that that's that's living under antinomianism. Anti in the Greek means against. Nomos means law. So basically, what you're living is doctrine according to which Christians are free by grace because everyone preaches. Jesus Christ, you're saved by grace. So therefore they think they have to, now they can ignore the Mosaic law. The, the laws that God set down, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not put no other God before them. They think they can do away with that because all they got to do is now look under great, the grace of Jesus Christ. But Paul says in Ephesians 5 and verse number 11, don't participate in the fruitless works of the darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. For what makes everyone everything visible is light. Paul says don't even participate in the works of darkness. But yet, we come into church. We all show the by see God Korabasia all this. Boy, the music playing just what we start running around the church. We start shouting. Hallelujah. God is good. Who I'm on fire. You don't know what the Lord has done to me. Oh, we get the church just going. Just to go everybody in the house praising God. Woo, that word feels just right. And the Lord told me to tell you that this time next year, you're going to be in your own house. And boy, we just, woo, Jesus, all right, woo, crying, thank you, God. <coughs> and that same preacher, that's doing all them theatrics. Because that's what they are. As soon as he leaves the church, cussing his wife out, calling up his girlfriend, telling him, meet you at 7 o'clock tonight. They go a couple towns over to the club that she like, so nobody know who he is. 
They in there dancing all kinds of ways that I wouldn't even want to think about, let alone do. Then they finish at the club where they're, they've been drinking and dancing. They go back to the hotel doing unthinkable things. Along with that, they snort a line or two, hitting a pipe or two. And then he come right back in the pulpit on Sunday. Matter of fact, he in the church on Wednesday teaching Bible study. It's called apostasy. It's called a hypocritical life. It's doing those things that go against God, but yet you claim you represent God. Take this sermon in. Put it in your heart. It is not okay to live any type of way. It's not. There's a standard. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, pick up your cross. Deny yourself and follow me. I remember I was confused some years back when I was had come back to the church and, and I was I said to my pastor because he used to always say once you're saved you're always saved I never understood that because I knew people who said they were saved but they was clubbing every weekend they was drinking every day they was messing with married men and women and all and I didn't understand and, and, I, would, and I would look and say and, and I remember saying to myself when they would say they were saved and God was just saving and Jesus was you know and I would say you say I, 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 you know, I would say this to myself you know you you saved and you would live like that I, I'm saying well, I ain't know you can look like that. You say because I thought you had to put down, you know, the, the, you know, put down some things. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Become, behold, all things become new. So I, that was my, that was my way of being coming a Christian. You know, I got light, light on that old man, that old life, and, I, and, and everything got to become new, changed. I, there's some things I got to do differently. That's how I looked at it. But when they they told me they was, and I and I and I was really confused, Sister Brianna. So I went to, to Reverend Elder. I said, Reverend Elder, I don't understand this. He took me to the scripture. Said, if any man be, and, and, and not if any man, if you, if you want to be one of my disciples, you have to pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. He said, if they ain't doing that, then they ain't saved. And that made a lot of sense to me. What are you doing in your life? Today, this week, last week, that if Jesus literally was physically in your presence where you could see him, that you would not do. When you answer that question, my solution is work on it. Ask God to help you with it because he will. He said, I stand here with arms wide open. God will never turn around, turn his back. Because then he would be a liar. Because he said, I'm with you always. Even to the ends of the world. I'm with you. And then we know the Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So he's always with us. There's nothing that God will not do that he will not help us with to help us to get into an eternity with, to, with him. Remember, the word of God says, Narrow is that road to salvation. There's going to be few that find it. Few. Are you in the few? Or are you part of the secret service thing? Being a spy in the church. Infiltrating the body of Christ. By pretending and faking to be something that you're not. Representing the most high God. In a way that should not be. By coming here. Playing the part. Acting the role. And then going back out there and doing you. You cannot. Continue. To partake in the world. And represent Jesus Christ. You just can't. You can't have one foot in. The church. And one out. See how. The more I spread, the more unstable I become to the point where I may fall. That's what's happening. And eventually, you're going to go down. And if you don't, God said, because you couldn't choose, because you were wishy-washy, because you wanted to be here on Sunday and here on Tuesday, or you wanted to be here on Wednesday night Bible study, 
here on Saturday. You want to be here doing this, shouting and hooping, hollering and preaching and representing me. And then you want to get out of the club or go do this and do that. You want to do all these things because you couldn't choose. Guess what? I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And then you're going to get before Jesus. When that day come, whether it come today, whether it come when Jesus come back, you're going to stand before him. And you're going to blow his up all happy. You just know your name is live with life. Because you know you preach fire down there. Woo! But all those souls that got saved up under my leadership, you just know you, you got a mansion in heaven that's just laid out. Probably not for anybody else. You just know. You all going to up to Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, G. What happened, man? You know, y'all on first name basis. You, that, that's your homeboy. You just know him like that. And, and, and he says, Excuse me? Who are you? Come on, G-Man, it's me, man! I was the pastor of the Great Amount Christian Church! 10,000 people! And he's gonna say, Excuse me? Do I know you? I'm sorry. Let, let, let me just take, see, see, God is so good. And I'm just playing with this thing. Let me just take another look to make sure. Even though God knows everything. What'd you say your name once again? Pastor Robin Ross. Hold on. Let me go to the R's. Let me go, let me go to the R's. Uh, Robin. Renee. Uh, Robin. Uh, Robin. Uh, Rioja. Robin. Robin Ross. I, I'm sorry. Your name's not in here. You will depart from it. And you will spend your eternity in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it's so sad when you hear people say, there's no such thing as hell. If there's no such thing as hell, then there's no such thing as heaven. Because when Jesus begins to talk about the two in Matthew 25, I believe it is, he talks about heaven being eternal and hell being eternal. So I can't believe that heaven is eternal and I'm going to spend an eternity with God and cannot believe that hell is not real. Or like most people like to say, hell is here on earth. So many people are deceived. The enemy is running rampant. Y'all know the enemy hate me so much. He, he hate me. And I don't care because I hate him back. But he hate me so much. Not only did I come down with COVID for a third time, and every time I get COVID, my kids can tell you, my sister can tell you, my house can tell you, right after I get bronchitis, right in the middle of COVID, it turns into bronchitis. So I get sick. I'm sick for a couple weeks. But I was having, I don't know if I told you I was having the shortness of breath and tightness in my chest. I had been having that, and I ended up going to the cardiologist. They did, the, of course, the stress test with the dye and all that. They found something. The week I had COVID, they called me. She tells me to start taking aspirin immediately. If I have any chest pain, call 911. But she couldn't tell me what she found. They're going to talk about it when I can come in. We have five days after you clear of your COVID symptoms. Okay, cool. Go in Thursday. They found something. They believe it's a blockage. You know what that is? The enemy wants to shut me up. Why? Because I take this walk with Jesus seriously. The enemy ain't. No, let me, let me rephrase that. He ain't just trying to shut me up. He wants to kill me. Because I take this walk with Jesus seriously. I'm not compromising my soul nor your soul and then call myself dying and standing before God. I won't do it. Not for my mother when she was alive, my father when he was alive, none of my children. Jesus said, you've got to be willing to forsake everybody to come after me. So it would behoove me to try to please my husband Doing the, the tango or the two-step and dropping and doing all these things as opposed to pleasing God. Because God put me in a marriage with an unsaved man, then it's my duty to lead him in the right way, not let him lead me in the wrong way. Mind you, and it, it ain't just husband and wives. 
It's everywhere. It's, it's, sin is everywhere. People do things everywhere. Just a husband and wife, it, to me, is one of the closest things that can come to a piece of heaven. If, if it's designed, if it goes the way that God designed marriage to be, you could really have a slice of heaven with a beautiful husband and beautiful wife relationship. You could really have a slice of heaven. Because that's the, the, the way that the man is supposed to love his wife as Christ loved the church. So that could be literally a slice of heaven. But when you got all, and that's why I always use husband and wife. Nothing against nobody, but that's why I always use husband and wife as an example. But you can, you can, you can, you can be in, in a marriage and, and call yourself wanting to please that man so bad. Or please that woman so bad. That you find yourself drifting from Jesus and going towards their life when it should be the other way around. You ain't got to tell your man off. You ain't got to cuss him out. You ain't got to put him down because he don't go to church. You ain't got to do none of that. The only thing you have to do is lead by example. That's all you got to do. With your children, your children, some of them might go astray, some of them might not. You know, in the family, there's always one. If it's a big family, maybe one or two that go off and wander. But guess what? As long as you continue to be faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. And those same kids that went astray, they'll do about face and make their way back. Because that's God's promise to you. But if, if I'm up here preaching, doing wrong, that, that's one of the reasons why I don't worry about my kids. I remind God of his promise all the time. You said if I trade them up in you. You said if I be saved, you said go on. I tell him, I, tell, I give him the word right back to him. But if I got up in here and I got this mic and I taught you these things like the Pharisees did back in the Old Testament, they taught the, they knew the law, Diamond. They knew the law and they were serious. Boy, they would go across land and sea to make one convert to save one soul. That's how serious they was about the law. Now you could get somebody famous somewhere in the world right now preacher, famous, and try to get them over here to, to a congregation of 20 people and they ain't coming unless there's a price tag with it. But these Pharisees will cross land and see the Bible says to make one convert. And they knew the law. They knew it like the back of their hands. But guess what? They didn't live it. They didn't live it. And the Bible says they would not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if I get them in here and I grab this mic and I can know this word like the back of my hand and preach this word like the back of my hand, but if I ain't living it, guess what? I will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. This thing is so fragile. It's so fragile. It's so important to really read your word for yourself and understand what the word is saying. So when you do come in here and I'm up in here preaching, you know that I'm lined up with God's will and God's way and his word. But not just me. Any preacher you may hear, we go to another service or you go to your cousin's church because your cousin invites you for friends and family day, you'll know. You'll know. We cannot play with this thing. Especially in this day and age. I don't understand how we could go through all of this and get to where we are in this day and age. From biblical times to now, get to where we are in this day and age when we know we in the last days. We know this because we see all the signs in the times. We know we're in some dark times. And then we get here in these dark times and want to play with God. I don't understand it. I can see maybe back in biblical days, you know, when, when God walked amongst the garden with Adam, they want to play with him a little bit. He was still right there. You know, they had access right there. But why would we wait to get here? When not, if I mess up, and you follow me. And you begin to mess up. And then you begin to mess up because you follow me. And then you begin to mess up because you follow me. And then Caleb begin to mess up because they follow me. And, 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 and to the point where I'm on my way to hell, y'all on the way to hell with me. Because it's that serious. And we got to take it serious. We really got to do better. Y'all know one of my favorite sayings. Check yourself. 
before you wreck yourself from the pulpit to the door. There's an infiltration going on in the house of God. There's an infiltration going on in the body of God, in the body of Christ. You can't get in your own body and go against your own self. It wouldn't feel good if I decided I didn't like my eye. I'm going to pluck my eye out, Dana. It wouldn't feel good. If I decided this hand ain't doing me no good no more, so I'm going to cut it off. But that's what happens when you have people who dress the part, act the part, play the part, and they got everybody deceived in the body, but they serve the body no purpose because they are against the body. But the enemy deceives you into thinking, you all right, because you preaching that word good, girl. Oh, 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 you shout right good now. Oh, girl, I love when you speak a tongue, girl. Oh, I feel the spirit, Jesus, when you begin to speak a tongue. Enemy, have you deceived? And all the while, there's a place in the blackness of darkness that is reserved forever. These people are discon discontented grumblers living according to their own desires. When your desires become greater than those of God, you need to take some inventory. Do a list and ask God to help you. They're flattering people for their own advantage. I've seen so many preachers, leaders, wannabe leaders in my time in ministry. I'll flatter you in a minute. They become your best friends. They become your biggest cheerleader. They sow into your life all the time. They praise you with their lips all the time. And all the time they have a hidden agenda. Because it's just flattery. Because in essence they want to fulfill the desires of their own lust. Has nothing to do with Jesus. Has nothing to do with being saved. Has nothing to do with souls that are out there dying. But it has to do with their own desires lust. All eyes on me. I'm the, the pastor's pet. I got favor with God. I could do this. I, 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 I could do the pastor's job. I could preach better than the pastor. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. And it's never, ever to them about Jesus. One thing I tell people all the time, and y'all don't hear me, hear me now. Everybody in this church has a gift. Four multiple gifts. Some of us are multiple gifted by God. Everybody has a gift. That's why you see psychics out there. They're gifted. They just don't use it for the kingdom. Everybody has a gift. Rihanna got a gift. Kayla got a gift. Diamond got a gift. Mia got a gift. Amy got a gift. Alice got a gift. I got a gift. So her gift may be to interpret tongues. Your gift may be to prophesy. Your gift may be to sing. Kayla's gift may be to preach. My gift may be just to smile. Amy's gift may be to, to minister to her friends at five years old. Five, how old are you? Five? Mm -hmm. That's my great baby. How she five? Mia's gift may be, to, may, may be to be kind to everybody she comes in contact with, displaying the kindness of Jesus Christ. There's no need for me to come to church and be jealous of Brianna's gift. Because guess what? When God puts us all in the building together, he's so strategic, as I say it all the time. He knows exactly who he's putting in the building. He knows what gifts he's putting in the building. And every single gift that's in this building works together for the kingdom of God. There's no big eyes, no little use. I may be the one that God uses to deliver the word, but that person that cleans that toilet is just as important to me. Jesus said, if you want to be great, you gotta you gotta learn to serve. You gotta learn to serve. When they call me and ask me, can you cook for Street Fire or can you cook for Night Strike? It's for over 30, 40 people. Sometimes my schedule's so busy, but literally I don't know how I'm gonna do it. But I say yes. 
Because you have to be a servant. You have to learn how to serve. Sometimes the people I work with, the population I work with, had me come out there and meet them 8 o'clock in the morning. They want to go to rehab. They want, they're tired. They want to go to rehab. They were crying the night before or midnight when they called me, crying their eyes out. They want to go to rehab. I'm going to come pick you up at 8 o'clock in the morning. We're going to start making some phone calls. I get there at 8 o'clock. I sit there at 10 o'clock. They ain't never show up. But I go because you have to be willing to serve. Because it just might be that one day when that one really will show up and really want to go. And that's how God is with us. So we cannot be fickle with him. We can't be phony with him. This has got to be a real thing. Amen? Amen. 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 God, we thank you for this word that's going forth on today, God. We, we thank you for who you are and, and what you represent in our lives, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's cross. Oh, God, to, for all of our sins. He didn't just do it for some. He didn't just do it for this group or that group. But he died for each and every one of us. Displaying your love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God, that gave us a way to be reconciliated back to you when we are no longer on this earth. So we just say thank you, God. We ask that you would help us to take this Christian walk serious, God. And God, when we mess up, we know you'll forgive us for our mistakes. But God, help us not to live in blatant sin. Help us not to live in blatant opposition to you, God. Help us on this journey so we can be a beacon light in this dark world, God. God, I praise you, I thank you, and I magnify you now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. If there's anybody here who does not know Jesus in the free part of their sin, if there's anybody on Facebook who does not know Jesus in the free party of your sin and you would like to invite him into your heart on today, simply repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again on the third day. And that you are now seated at the Father with all power in your hand. Help me, Jesus. I come from a life of wickedness. I did it my way for all these years. I'm tired of me. So help me, Lord. Help me to turn it around. Help me to get it right. One day, at a time. one day at a time, one moment at a time, one at a time. Some, days one some days one second at a time, and God, if you continue to be with me, I know I can do it, because I heard somebody say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, amen. amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, you are now saved. Get into a good Bible-based church. Greater love is always available, but if greater love is not your choice, there's plenty of churches out here in Middletown that would love to have you that are truly living for Christ. Amen? Amen. Be blessed. Go in peace.